And welcome back. Some very important qualities that make a great president, and they may be a little hard to find in November when you go into the voting booth. Uh, Talmadge Boston, a presidential historian, trial attorney in Dallas. His new book is called Cross-Examining History, coming out next month. It, it, kind of a trial lawyer's take on what, it, what is a great president. So do Americans expect their presidents to be perfect? No, and that's part of the modern era of historians is to reveal all the flaws that they can find from Thomas Jefferson and his slaves to Andrew Jackson and Native Americans to John F. Kennedy and his sexual shenanigans. I think everybody wants to know the whole truth and nothing but the truth, no longer the great man theory of presenting mm -hmm. history. And history becomes much more fascinating when we recognize that these people are like you and I. They, we, they make mistakes, we make mistakes, right. but they rise to greatness at key times. Uh, you call the president, or say the president ought to be at least, the conscience-in-chief for the United States. What do you mean by that? Well, George Washington set the standard. That is, we like to think that, that our leader epitomizes integrity and that his moral compass is always locked on true north. And historically, for the most part, we, we've had presidents who we had confidence Unfortunately, 2016 is not one of those years. You, you look at both of these candidates, and both of them are flawed. And a lot of people are going to say, well, that's just because of the nosy, sneaky press these days. But, but, but we, the, both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have integrity issues that have, that have been well aired. Major integrity issues. And that's why today's polls show that there are 20% of Americans who are undecided, mm -hmm. even at this late stage. And that includes many Republicans and many Democrats who just recognize this high level of distrust that so many people have for each of the two candidates. Uh, Donald Trump has connected with a certain segment of American voters. Who are they and why does he connect with them? Well, the information I have is that a big chunk of them is white America who did not go to college. Mm -hmm. And they are obviously very angry about their position in life, their, their standard of living is not going up. In fact, in many cases, it's going down. And they feel like there has not been a candidate who truly empathizes with their situation and at least promises to do something positive about it. Of course, whether or not he's able to follow through on doing right. something about it remains to be seen. But at least he's feeling their pain, to use Bill Clinton's term. And he communicates in very simple terms, I will build a wall. Right. I don't know if he's going to build a wall, but he says he is, and people yeah. understand something very He says, simple I will like knock that. out ISIS. Okay, how are you going to do that? Right. I will solve the federal deficit problem. How are you going to do that? Right. Not big on details, but with a broad brush, people seem to be connecting. And yet Hillary Clinton is one who, over her entire career in public life, has, has failed to connect with people. Yeah, you know, even her convention speech last week talked about people still don't know me. Well, how is that possible? You've been in the public eye since 1992, almost a quarter of a century, constantly, and people still don't right. know you? Yeah. What does that say? Um, traditionally, a president builds coalitions. Uh, do, do you look at either one of these and see the ability to build coalitions? There are, after all, you know, members of the other party, people who may not agree with you on some issues. How do you win them over and actually do something? Well, that is a great challenge, and I think that what this election in all of its strangeness is showing is that America is changing, mm -hmm. and not necessarily changing for the better in terms of what it does it take to have great governance. Well, historically, you've got to be able to work compromise. You've got to negotiate a solution whereby you can build a consensus. Donald Trump does not appear to have any interest in building consensus. Hillary Clinton, by curving toward Bernie Sanders, is obviously uh, moving away from consensus, although at least she did serve in the U.S. Senate. Presumably she has some awareness that if right. this is going to work as far as our government, there's got to be some compromise and consensus building. All right. Thanks very much. The book, once again, that's coming out doesn't really touch on this election. A little too soon for a historian to be writing about something that hasn't happened yet, but uh, a fascinating look. A, a, a trial attorney cross-examining history and looking at uh, presidents of the past. Thanks very much. We've got a link to the book uh, on fox4news.com.